Hello, everybody. I am Revigilance, and welcome back to Let's Play Snatcher. Okay, last time we were exploring the real Queen's Hospital underground. And we're looking at some weird stuff in room number two. Everything's quite neatly organized. Samples here of stuff. Antibodies with beneficial melanoma. Uh, yes, it's their maintenance hospital. We already figured that out. Ceiling. Argon lasers. Argon dye lasers. Destroys cancer cells. A gene cannon. It's got a red light. It's a disquieting atmosphere. <clears throat> Looks more like a place to treat skin cancer. Yeah. Skeleton was waiting to get his skin here. Scout the containers are new. Whatever. Now it's down to just room number three. Investigate switches. Maybe it can be opened using those two buttons. Use one and two at the same time. Alright, let's try pushing both buttons simultaneously. The two buttons are on opposite panels, so there's no way one person can push them both alone. But if two of us work together, it might do it. That's it, Gillian. It makes perfect sense. It's the same system they used to use in nuclear missile silos in the late 20th century. Eliminates the risk of one man going nuts and acting alone. Well, it's hard to be sure, but let's give it a try anyway. I've got button one. Random, you push number two. You ready? On three. One, two, three. Come on! You did it! Door number three opened. With safety measures like that, they must have had a good reason for wanting to keep it closed. Yep. Let's go inside! Door number three. Yeah. Good God! I read four human skeletons in this room. It's... it's their more! Perhaps victims of the Snatchers? Well, it doesn't look like whoever put them here was too worried about making sure they would rest in peace. No, it doesn't. These have got to be their victims. This is probably where they hide the bodies of the originals they snatch from places like Outer Heaven. They probably picked Outer Heaven because it gets a lot of VIP traffic. Plus, during masquerade time, they could work the place and still keep their identity secret. Yeah, and the guy who set up the link between them and Outer Heaven was Freddy, that taxi driver. They must have gone after him, not because of who he was, but what he did. After all, with a taxi, there's plenty of chances to milk your customers for information. That's probably how they learned about Outer Heaven and Plato's Cavern. I've been wondering what they had done with the bodies. Wanna hide a book? What better place than the library? Need to hide a body? How about the morgue? And for them, keeping the bodies hidden is crucial. I mean, if somebody who's supposed to be dead is out walking the streets, it wouldn't be too hard to figure out that something screwy is going on. That means that if we can figure out who these bodies were, then we just nailed four Snatchers. Okay, let's give the place a smell first. Yeah, it smells bad. It used to be a proper morgue, but now it's a little more than a closet. The wall has a ventilation duct. That's probably good, or else this place would be, like, poisonous or something. One of the bodies is still decomposing. The other three are little more than skeletons. There's a cover on the duct, but it has been weakened by oxidization. There are a few droppings on the floor from mice who are no doubt feeding on the bodies. A number of different insect larvae have infested the body. It hasn't been well preserved, to say the least. But it's definitely a human body. Warm air is flowing through the vent. It's apparently a rather large duct. Estimated time of death? 
The insects infesting the decomposing body can be divided into eight large groups. Each of those groups works on the body for roughly 15 days, making an eight times 15 day or four month cycle. As such, an analysis of the variety and number of and size of the organisms on the body allows a rather inaccurate estimation of which group is currently present. In other words, you can figure out how long the victim's been dead without analyzing the body itself, right? On this particular body, flies have laid eggs and the maggots have grown into adult flies, so it has been less than 30 days since the death. As for the other three bodies, one full cycle has been completed, so at least four months. Ah, that was a mouthful. Cause of death. Can you determine the cause of death? The bodies are severely damaged. Such determination would require more extensive facilities than are available here. Okay, what about identity? That'll be important. Hair, clothing, even teeth. Anything that could be used to make an identification is gone. Damn, Snatchers. They were careful to make sure their ident identities didn't get out. If we had even had some teeth, we might be able to make an ID. There's teeth in that picture, right there. What about these teeth here? They've been deliberately misaligned to prevent identification. Oh, okay. Then I guess we can't ID them. There is a way. What? How? We can perform a simulated reconstruction. Fortunately, the skulls of the victims are still intact. Reconstruction, eh? A good idea. Okay, reconstruct corpse. Let's do this thing. Now performing simulated reconstruction of the head and facial features of each of the four victims. Commencing with victim number one. Now performing craniometric analysis. X-ray and sagittal X-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, and positron CT data gathered. Complete cranial data now being compiled. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction. First, victim's age. Estimate based on one, presence or absence of cranial fontanelles and chroma of epicranial sutures. Two, area of facial region and cranium. Three, height of upper and lower jaw and development of alveolar part. And four, location of cranial center of gravity. Next, victim sex. Estimate based on one, overall size of cranium. Two, parietal bone angle. And three, development of splatnocranium. Lastly, victim's race. Estimate based on one, overall cranial configuration. Two, volume of intracranial cavity. And three, mass of the skull. Now commencing soft feature reconstruction based on average results of above analysis. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race, 10%, based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of first victim completed. It's Freddy Nielsen. Moving on to second victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number two. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of second victim completed. That's Lisa Nielsen. Moving on to third victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number three. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of third victim completed. Who in the world is that? That's the director of Queen's Hospital, uh, Shin Fui, uh, what's his face, uh... Shin Shu O Gillian. Moving on to last victim. Now commencing reconstruction of features of victim number four. This one's the most recent. It's still decomposing. Now starting craniometric analysis. Complete cranial data now being compiled using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Craniometric analysis complete. Now commencing reconstruction using the same techniques as the previous reconstruction. Reconstructing. Initial phase completed. 
Margin of error on estimate of victim's race 10% based on use of average values. Now adding postulated hair and eye features. Reconstruction of head of final victim completed. It's... It's the chief! What? The chief is a snatcher! The Benson on the scrap of that patient record was Benson Cunningham! Judging from the condition of the body, I would estimate that the snatching took place approximately one month ago. So it was the chief who sabotaged our turbo cycle. In those matches we found in Harry's room, the chief must have put them there to try to set him up. No doubt Harry figured it out and decided to leave that face-to-face -face message. 